everybody, it's Rob Holman with Northwest Fisher Reports. Today we're with Ross Outdoor Adventures and Max Probridge of the Washington Bow Fishing Association. We're out here for bow fishing for carp. We've got Mike Valente and Paul Hamilton up there. I'm going to take a shot at it a bit, little bit later. I think you're going to enjoy this and we're going to learn why we bow fish for carp here in Moses Lake. Keep watching. Out early in the morning, gonna go out and cast away all these waters here for the big boys. And we all come out to play. It's a Northwestern way. Northwest Fishing Reports. Presented by Gray's Harbor Unders. water clarity. If you can't see them, you can't shoot them. Does that mean there's times of the year that are better or worse? Or? Um, yeah, they're better or worse. And then if you get too many of them like we just ran into, you know, if they just turn the lake, you know, we call it cloudy or burnout. They burn out everywhere, leave a little plume of cloud and that's what happened to us just now. We can't see anything. The whole lake's gone. We'll have to go find, a, find another batch of them. So you're gonna move us back towards the the end of the cove here, the yep. We're top gonna of the go cove. Back towards the end of the cove and see if we can't track a couple down. We call this a blowout, where there's just so many fish it just it just blows out, and then the water's just nothing but murky. That's from all fish. That's from all fish. Yeah. How many carp are in Moses Lake? A bazillion. <laughs> Seems like we take out so many every year and they don't even put a dent in them. But we're trying. We're trying to get them out of here. Get the lake cleaned up. There's just so many of them, and I, I, they're not a food what, fish. Do they destroy habitat for other fish? Uh, destroy habitat, uh, you know, they eat, just make the lake dirty. So the carp, by stirring up the uh, mud, will cover up the eggs of the other species of fish that uh, everybody likes, the, the bass, the walleye, perch. So that's uh, one of the biggest reasons to get rid of them. What are you doing up there? You're, you're, you're looking for fish, huh? Yep, fish. So then you take your shot, you guys, uh, what happens when you hook up? You got reels on there? Yep, got reels on here. Just pull on them, reel them in, take them off, put them in the barrel, get them out of the lake. Look at these guys right here. Coming in, yep. Shadow, fish, and they're shadow big. Fish, actually fish a little like that. You can see them pretty good. Just going off the other side. Right at them. In a barrel. Well, of course you got him. He's so big. <laughs> <laughs> is that a typical size for one of these? Yeah, this is tip this is on the bigger side. Okay. Well, yeah. What do you think that weighs? Oh, uh, I'd say 19, 20 pounds. We can find out here. You think there's bigger? Oh, there's bigger. The state record is shot on this lake was 48 pounds. Are they invasive in Moses Lake? Invasive species all across Washington. You don't need a, a fishing license. You know, you can just get out and shoot them. There's no limit. Take as many as you want. Uh, just don't recommend toss them out at the boat launch. Man, you got to aim that far below it, at least. Nice. Oh, 
one, you got it. Missed him. <laughs> no, I'm supposed to take the same fish. Find a new reel for my bow tomorrow. Look at that! Look at that! I got it, boys. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll set you up now. Set you up. You knock it down. Oh. Yeah, you're shooting when they're running away. Look at that. When I first started out, I would get a two liter bottle and tie a weight to it. I'd toss it out there in a pond or in the canal and then put a, a rubber tip on it. And just constantly shoot at that so you get your depth. Oh, yeah, baby. Bucket list has been completed. I just gotta kill one now. Oh, that was close, Mike. Well, he 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 wanted to get killed too. <laughs> Three shots. Look at that. Ain't that cool, man. You ever seen a guy that brought two 55 gallon barrels for his tackle box for his creel? That's the largest creel I've seen yet. Still here. Still here. It's right there. <laughs> Off to the side of it, right on, right on height, just off to the side. You can't shoot catfish. Is there any other game fish besides carp you can bow? No. Frogs. Frogs. Frogs and carp. Look at that. That looked like you were two feet below it. Oh. That is how it's done. I was like right here. Oh, you got it! You got, you got him. him! Nice. Alright, Mike. Nice. Heck yeah! The smallest carp in Moses Lake, you got it! <laughs> What'd you do there, Mike? Well, I aimed like four feet below it. So the water really refracts it, huh? It really does. It's, it, it's hard, man. The pressure's on me. One, Roger's Pirates. <laughs> those, those little ones are really hard to shoot. Because they're, you know... They're, they're little. little. <laughs> more skill, right? Absolutely more skill. It's a smaller target. Aim small, miss small. Every 600 shots or so, the blind guy's gonna get one, right? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Max, can they can they put up a fight on that reel? Yes, they can. They'll tow the boat around if you get a 20 plus pounder. No kidding. Yeah, but anybody can get a 20 plus pounder. It's hard. To get 
stick to that, Mike. You stick to that. <laughs> Goldfish, you know. Right. The true carp. <laughs> the real purist. The purist, yes. They go okay. for the goldfish. Tiny little arrows. <laughs> Look at that. Not bad for a rookie. Shelby, uh, you much of a bow guy? Not, uh, not much. But uh, I suspect I will be here shortly. Looks pretty fun, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Looks like a ton of fun. I think we should take a shot up there. Uh, I think we do. We got going, Mike. <laughs> you hooked one. Or you, you, do you call that hooking one? Holy cow. All right. Boom. Start fishing on Moses Lake. Absolutely. Bow and arrow. Got to do it. Yeah. If you've never done it, you got to try it. You'll be hooked. Shelby. We've been filming these guys all morning. This looks like too much fun. It looks like a ball. Max, we're gonna get up here and give it a shot, all right? Yep, well, let's get it. So, admittedly, I'm a novice. I'm not a bow hunter. Uh, I haven't shot a bow in a long time. Shelby, are you a, a pro bow I've guy? I've shot a bow probably half a dozen times in my life. What do I got here, and what do I need to do? <laughs> yep. So we got a compound recurve bow here. We got uh, your arrow, which has got a safety slide on it from AMS bow fishing. You got a tip here that's removable. 200 pound Dacron line. Got a little easy reel on here uh, to load it. You put it in this little rest shelf right here with the knock tip up. You got this black knock stopper, they call it. Okay. You reel this in so you got a little bit of slack. Put it, I call that the garage because that's where it should be stored and you're ready to go. There's nothing you need to push to pull back. You just pull back, look at the fish, aim right towards it, shoot and let go. All right, any questions? <laughs> hey, we're just gonna try it. We're gonna try it. We got it, Shelly. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> How much shot are you on? Is the hundred? Hundred seven. Hundred seven. Hey everybody, we're about out of time for tonight. We're gonna keep going. I'm gonna try to get myself a carp, but uh, we gotta sign off for this episode of Northwest Fish Reports TV. Max, thanks a lot for bringing us out. Yeah, thanks for coming out. Glad you guys come out. Got a couple of fish. I think everybody had a great time. This is a fun sport. Please go online and check out the Washington Bow Fishing Association. If you're interested in this sport, get out here and have some fun. On the run. Nice. Mike. Good morning, Rob. <laughs> Off on another adventure, I see. Yeah, we're gonna do it. I think it's a uh, big Mackinac today. 
See ya. Aloha. <laughs> I'm going with these guys. <laughs> I suppose we could give you a hand there. No, that's all right. You know that we are. You look I, really I'm occupied. I'm talking about your wife, not you. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. We're coming to you from Lake Chelan. Northwest Fishing Reports today is fishing with Lance Efring of Washington Guide Services. We've been out with you before and had great success up on Stahican for uh, Kokanee and some Chinook. So today we're doing something completely different. We're fishing Lake Lakers today, or Mackinac, whichever you prefer to call them. But, um... Yeah, we got a few, little bit different technique than kind of some people. I don't recommend it for every boat. One of the things uh, you'd mentioned over the phone with me is that uh, today we're going to be going for quality, not quantity. Correct. Yep. Yeah, and the, the way that I fish uh, right on the bottom, dragging through the mud, is uh, uh, I tend to get bigger fish. So, all right. Well, I'm really uh, interested to see how this plays out. So we've got our lines down, and as they say. Let's go fishing. All right, let's do it. No so, way. mile an hour, huh? 1.3. What is it going to look like when it hits? It'll, it'll bounce. When we get down here, it'll bounce, start bouncing really, really fast. And then all of a sudden, it'll just load up and it'll just start digging pretty hard. Or it'll pop off. If it pops off, just walk over and start reeling before we even do anything with it. If you look at that that uh, fish finder right there, we just had something come up and uh, look at that kokanee rod and then it swam back down to the bottom. Pretty hard dirt. All right. Well, first one of the day, first Laker. This is not a 20 pounder though, I'll tell you that. So we're really not too deep here, are we Lance? We're no, we're running uh, 120 about 140 feet. feet on that one. This is gonna be an eater, I would say. Your smaller ones are generally better, better eating fish. They don't have as much fat on them. They're eating more mice and shrimp and things like that, so. They put up a better fight coming up sh from shallows, you know, 100, 150 feet. But those fish that uh, I've caught 300 feet down. There's not, not so much, much there. Not much there. Well, oh, they got there that we go. Big, That's a nice fish. They got a Look big air bladder. Look at that. That hook popped out right as Lance netted them. Lance, you don't mind me showing the nope. viewers your uh, you're good on your lure here. That's called the bleeding frog. Bleeding frog. Yeah, got a little bit of red in it. That's an interesting pattern. Yeah, from that's Mag Lips, nice. Yakima bait. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's one of my favorites. Let's get him out of here. He's uh, got sharp teeth, so. You guys want to watch these fish. They do have sharp teeth and they will cut you. Yep. But that's a nice representative, uh, probably about a four or five pounder. Yeah. I would guess. Perfect eating size. Those are perfect. That's going to cut fairly red and and uh, it's going to have not have a lot of fat. It's probably eating a lot of mice and shrimp. So uh, I'll make a liar out of me now. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's going to be 5.7 pounds. 5.7. Nice. And see, this is all air bladder. That big old belly on it. So if we were to release that fish, it's just going to float on top of the water because it hasn't released all that air. So what I do with some of the bigger fish is um, I have a deep water release. We're visiting with Lance Efrig of Washington Guide Services, and um, we're using a technique for targeting the bigger lakers here in Lake Chelan. I think the bigger fish lay more on the very bottom of the lake. Um, 
they're very the big fish are lazier than the smaller fish they don't move around as much so um, I take the downriggers and I run them all the way down to the mud mm -hmm. uh, I don't do this in all parts of the lake but up, out, out here on Mac bar we can do that so I take the ball I run it all the way down I let it set right on the bottom so when that ball hits the bottom we all know you're supposed to bring it up two or three feet you don't do that I don't do that um, I let that ball drag right through the mud um, and my belief is 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 that that fish is sitting there laying there and then when that ball comes by it will has to move out of the way and then when it comes back to let's say it's bed uh, then 100 feet later there here comes my bait and then they attack because yep. I don't think those fish move those bigger fish don't move very far maybe a foot or two to uh, attack those baits when they come by so makes sense a big fish like that uh, expends more energy swimming a lot and they're just gonna sit and hold their turf and wait wait for that food to come to them right for sure right for sure now uh, with this all being said I don't recommend doing this on like a light aluminum boats because we do hang up a downrigger ball once in a while puts tremendous pressure on your downriggers it's hard on equipment yeah but I mean if you're gonna go for big fish you know it, it, it takes some some uh, uh, some guts to go do that sometime. I tend to get, you know, my biggest, my best days are like nine, nine fish, but they're 140 to 145 pounds That's of total of, fish. That's a lot of fish. So, I mean, I don't get numbers of, you know, 15 or 20 fish, but my, my fish tend to be more quality. Some of your favorite lures down here. Yep. Uh, these uh, are super plugs by super flies. Um, I run those in, in darker color, colors, obviously, too. Well, thanks, Lance. We're going to give this another go at a different spot, right? That's correct. We're going to we're gonna move up lake a little bit. Looks like the weather kind of calmed down. The wind's calmed down, so it won't be so bad up there. But we're going to go try another spot for, right. for a little while. Let's go get them.